I work a desk job primarily. And if you're anything like me, chances are the office gives you a free notebook, something like this. There's nothing wrong with this notebook. It's fantastic. It does its job. It's free. However, I being the fountain pen and good paper enthusiast and hobbyist decided I wanted a work notebook that better served those two characteristics and also gave me a little bit more creativity and freedom to do the work that I do in a manner that allowed me to express myself in my note taking methodology. Today I'm going to show you my favorite work notebook as well as a note taking methodology that really works well for me. This is what I get for free at the office. It's called a NotePro. It's by Blue Line here in Canada. And it's a coil notebook with lined paper. Generally, I'm not a fan of coil notebooks, although this one isn't too bad. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference, I suppose. And this has 192 pages of lined paper. It's the cheap kind of printer paper, nothing fancy about it. Not great for fountain pen use. It bleeds through, it feathers incredibly, and I find that even with regular ballpoint pens. For free though, fantastic. Don't get me wrong, this is what I used primarily in the early years of my career at work. However, as I got more and more into fountain pens and explored the wonderful world of really good quality paper, I decided that I wanted a notebook that A, I wanted something that would allow me to explore fountain pen use at work, and B, I wanted a notebook that allowed me to be a lot more creative and expressive with the type of work that I do. Enter the Oasis Notebook. This notebook happened to be on the shelf as I was exploring my local stationery shop, and I saw the Oasis Notebook and I decided that this would be an interesting one to try at work. This notebook is Japanese made, and it's by Profolio, and it has a soft cover. Comes in a few different color options, red, green, blue, I believe, maybe a couple of others. I like the black, it's just nice and simple and professional looking in my opinion. And at the time that I started buying these notebooks, they were 12 Canadian dollars. They've gone up in price a little bit. They're now 16 Canadian dollars or 13 US dollars. They are lay flats. Here are the exclusive features of the Oasis notebook which it's happy to tell you about inside of the front cover. And I think the beauty of these notebooks is really this proprietary dot grid combination. That's what Oasis calls it at least, is this proprietary dot grid combination. And as you can see, it's a grid type. It's got dots in here and it's got different options for spacing. They've got tiny little arrows here as well. So you can split this page into many different columns and widths, and that'll come in handy when I talk about the note-taking methodology that I like to use. The really neat thing I like about this is the fact that the dot grid combination actually disappears very seamlessly into the background when you start using it. So depending on how you want to use it, whether it's quick scratches or notes or just a full page of ink on paper, the dot grid combination, because it's so faint, it just disappears. However, if you want to use the grid or the dots, they're there for you to use. The other thing I really like about this paper is the fact that it's really thin sheets of paper. This is 75 grams Japanese paper. It's fountain pen friendly paper. However, I wouldn't recommend it for wet heavy inks in terms of your fountain pens. I do think that eventually it will bleed through. And I just jumped to the back of the notebook here so I can take a couple pages to show you an example of how the writing is on this. That's funny, I mixed up the X and Y axes there. Really neat in terms of writing, in terms of sketches, in terms of creative exploration. It's a terrible sketch. Or perhaps really accurate of my face, I'm not sure. Either way, you get the idea. In terms of how much the ink shows through the paper, you can see just a slight faintness to it. I don't mind that for work. Some people, for some people, I can understand how that might drive them nuts and they'd want a thicker, a thicker weight to the paper. It's 160 pages, 80 sheets of paper. 
in this notebook. So lots to, to work with. And I find that I tend to go through one of these, depending on how much I'm writing or how little I'm writing and what I'm doing in my job. Typically it's an average of six to eight months before I have to swap out the notebook. Some years it seems to last the entire year. In terms of protecting the soft cover notebook and tossing it around in my work bag, I house this within my Galen Leather A5 portfolio, which I find it to be incredibly professional looking. And it certainly adds a flair of distinction when you walk into a meeting room with your leather portfolio. One only needs to type a note-taking methodology into Google or YouTube search to get a thousand, if not more, different strategies and note-taking methodologies out there. And they're all great, don't get me wrong. I'm a firm believer of picking up a strategy or a system or a methodology and trying it out for a while and giving yourself a good amount of time to try it out, tweak it, change it around and see if it works for you. The one I'm gonna show you today seems to work really well for me in an office setting. It's not one that I use at home because I have a lot more time to be a lot more creative and slow at home or in my personal life when it comes to taking notes. When it comes to note taking in the office, I need to be quick, especially in meetings or in one-on-ones or large group settings. And so the note taking methodology that I gravitated to is called the Jim Quick or the Quick Note Taking Methodology. And I'll put a link to his fantastic YouTube video down below. So when it comes to the Quick Methodology, there's two things that I do. There's my to-do list for the day and then there's notes that I tend to take in a meeting. And the way I do it, and I like the Oasis notebook for this very reason, is when it comes to my to-do list, I tend to just draw a line right down. I write down my to-dos and my tasks. On the right hand side here, this is an exploration of the quick note-taking methodology, is asking myself questions in terms of the to-do list or in terms of my day. So, you know, what did Jack mean when he said, Frank explore, Frank what? When he said, Frank look at into this. So I, I tend to write down questions on the right hand side that, that are related to my to-do lists and my activities and generally in terms of carryover into the next day as well. Sometimes I'll write down uh, a task here for tomorrow. But really the right side for me is the exploration of here are my tasks on the left hand side that I must get done today and the right side are asking questions, writing down quick notes and thoughts and reflections in terms of my work day and what I need to do tomorrow that I should just keep in mind. The quick methodology and I love it for two reasons. One, it's quick, and that just happens to coincide with uh, Jim Quick's name there. And the other reason is that it seems to, for me again at work, lend itself to being creative and exploring in meetings in real time. So very similar to the to-do list here, uh, what I tend to do is I break this down, down to one side, and here I will capture, and here create. Now the Cornell method, which is I think similar to the quick method, tends to have a another section at the bottom here, which is where you would summarize your meeting. I don't typically tend to do that as I find the capture and create work well enough for me. I won't go into the details of why the quick methodology is the quick methodology. I encourage you to take a look at the video. Jim does a better job of explaining it than I can. I'm just gonna talk about why it works for me. So he talks about capture and create in these two columns here. Capture on the left hand side is when you're in a meeting, you're writing down notes of what somebody else is saying or what the information that is being presented to you. And what works for me is just capturing the highlights of the key points that I want to remember. I used to think that I had to write down everything that was being said to me in a meeting in order to memorize it. And now I just focus on the key highlights and key points that are pertinent or what I got out of the meeting. At the same time, the create column here is when somebody is talking or the information is being presented, 
I'll write down questions here. And according to Jim Quick, this helps get both sides of the brain firing so that the meeting is being absorbed in real time or the presentation or whatever it is. So I'll ask questions of, like, you know, uh, Bob said something about the XYZ. What is actually the XYZ? What does this mean to me? How will this affect my job? So the fact that I'm asking questions on the right hand side and actually taking the time to write it down while I'm listening to the information that's being presented helps me to register the relevancy. What I like about the create option here is that it really allows me to focus in real time in the meeting or the information that's being presented in whatever format, whether that's a presentation or a lecture or a lunch and learn or one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I'll ask myself questions here as the other person is talking or as the information is being presented. I'll make quick key points about what I should remember in terms of what was just presented or said. And I might even create some little to-do tasks here. Circle with Bob after meeting on technology, something like that. You know, how will this affect my job? What does this mean for me or for my team? These are the things that help me focus in, really tune into the meeting, the information, and digest it in real time. I'll still flip back to my notes, come back to this page here, and I will, you know, say meeting XYZ on this date. When I come back to this page, when I'm reflecting on the meeting there, or trying to remember what was said, I've got the key points, that's what I remembered, and the create column really helps me to go, oh right, yeah, that's what they were talking about, that's what I need to go understand and bring back. Sometimes I'll make quick sketches here, or figure out, you know, how does this go into this, this kind of thing, all off to the side. And it doesn't have to be just on one page, as the meeting progresses, I'll just flip to the next page and continue with my column and continue to capture and create. And that is the quick methodology in a nutshell. In terms of how I tweak this, sometimes the capture and create columns tend to blend where the presenter asks a question. So I'll write that down, but it's the same question that I have. And so there's a bit of an overlap in terms of how this all really kind of works together. Ultimately though, when it comes down to being able to take notes in an analog system, I find this so much better than just mindlessly typing notes into OneNote or something like that, which don't get me wrong, if that works for you, fantastic, keep doing it. For my brain, analog seems to be the only way that I can retain information and make meaningful decisions and actions based on that. I've been doing this for a few years now, this has worked really well for me. Perhaps I'll explore different note-taking methodologies down the road. Right now, this is how I quickly capture notes in a meeting and why I like using the Oasis notebook. Before you go, I'm curious, do you have your own specialized notebook for work, for the type of work that you do, whether it's desk setting or not? I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. And I'd love to hear about your different note-taking methodologies and strategies and how you do your work. Please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons below. Take care, have a wonderful day, and bye for now.